this is Richard from Modern Health Spain. First a disclaimer that in this newsletter we are sharing some news items and recent papers that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. You may have heard of lactic acid bacteria being used as probiotics, which are potentially beneficial bacteria in the human gut ecosystem. In our first study, the authors looked at lactic acid bacteria to produce NMN, both industrially and also as a probiotic. This would be really exciting, as potentially it could live in our gut and naturally create NMN for us. First, we would like to give a shout out to our supporters, who were very generous to buy us some coffees. It encourages us to continue to share information on ageing research. Thank you so much for your support. Here is the write-up of the study where a team in Japan is trying to produce NMN from fruit-loving lactic acid bacteria. NMN is currently quite expensive because efficient methods of production are not available yet. In the study, the team screened lactic acid bacteria looking for ones which produce NMN either in the cells or externally. They found three candidates from an original library of 174 strains. All three strains were fructobacillus and produced NR in the culture medium. The bacteria used fructose in anaerobic fermentation to generate NMN and NR internally, but not to secrete it. Here is the production of the NMN and NR in milligrams per liter in the three strains that they identified. Currently, there is a way of producing NMN from recombinant E. coli, which is more effective, but the team were using natural versions of the lactobacteria. And they hope to improve the lab bacteria through better culture conditions and genetic changes, which could be used in NMN production. And as I mentioned at the beginning, to see if the lab could provide a novel nutraceutical product with the anti-aging effects of NMN and probiotic effects of lactic acid bacteria. It would be great if we could have microbes living in our gut generating NMN inside of us. Here is the second paper, looking at a DNA methylation clock. However, they used a different approach to calibrate the clock and it produces a different measure called the pace of aging rather than a biological age. Measuring the pace of aging is important in terms of testing anti-aging therapies. What they did differently was they took a cohort of people from the same year instead of taking the participants with different ages where they may be systemic effects. For example, diets and the environment have changed a lot over the last 70 years. So if you compare a 70 year old to a 20 year old, this systemic difference could impact the results. Instead, they looked at 18 biomarkers across 12 years in 954 members of the Dunedin study born in 1972 to 1973. Over the 12 years, when the participants were between the ages of 26 and 38, they took the biomarkers to form a me measure of aging rate decline, which they called pace of aging. From this data set, they generated a predictor of the pace of aging based on 46 methylation sites. They then performed some validation in cohort studies and the calorie trial, a long-term calorie restriction trial. Here we see the system graphically the markers are listed on the left, which were used to calibrate the DNA methylation data. An interesting study, as the measure attempts not to define your biological age, but your biological speed of aging. The idea would be that before and after a clinical trial, the pace of aging could be measured and compared to see if the trial intervention had any impact on this metric. The next paper looks for genetic markers in long-lived mammals. We know that some mammals have evolved very long lifespans, but the molecular mechanisms remained unexplored. Maximum lifespan is generally related to body mass, but there are some outliers. For example, Brant's bat can live for up to 40 years, or naked mole rats can live for 30, while a similar sized mouse lives for three. Even in mammals which have long lives because they are large, the genetics still needs to be tuned to avoid cancer and other diseases, so they may well provide interesting data. In the paper, they compared 115 age-related genes in 11 long-lived species and 25 from a control group. They identified 16 unique, positively selected genes and 23 rapidly evolving genes. Nine were related to insulin and IGF-1 signaling pathway and 11 related to the immune system. A further 11 were related to cancer progression with some commonality across the species as to how they manage cancer resistance. 
The study shows how evolution adjusts lifespan to suit the organism and its environment, and they have identified candidate genes and pathways for further study, which could help us to identify ways that we could also extend our health span. Our next paper is looking at resuming ovarian function and pregnancy in women who had an early menopause by injection of a plasma enriched with platelets and gonadotropins. In this study there were 12 subjects, 11 of whom reversed their menopause and one of whom became pregnant. Let's have a look at it in more detail. In the study the participant's own blood was extracted and enriched with modified follicle stimulating hormone and then injected. They followed up looking at various hormones related to the ovulation cycle. If a woman resumed ovulating, IVF was used. There were 12 women in the trial who had had early menopause, of whom 11 resumed their menstrual cycle. And finally 13 eggs were retrieved and fertilized to lead to one pregnancy. As they say in the conclusion, the procedure was able, at least temporarily, to restore ovarian function and increase the probability of pregnancy in women with early menopause. Interesting, because the study was actually successful at reversing the menopause. Our final story comes to us from a tweet by Dr. Sinclair about a study showing that your biological age agrees with how you feel. Maybe feeling old can make you old. The study is, an older subjective age is related to accelerated epigenetic age. The paper has been peer-reviewed but is not published yet and only the abstract is available. In the study, the authors looked at the association between subjective age and epigenetic age in 2,253 adults with an average age of 67. The subjective age was assessed in 2008-2010 and in 2016 they had their epigenetic age assessed with the phenoage clock. As they say, an older subjective age was associated with accelerated epigenetic age. In summary, if you feel older than your age, your biological age is probably older as well, in part because of the perceived health and inflammatory profiles, which would seem to show that thinking of yourself as being young is important and certainly something that I aim to do. Thank you all for watching. I do hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and will speak to you again soon.